Hello, I'm Jeff Archer with Esri's 3D content team. In this video, we're going to take a look at georeferencing indoor CAD data, specifically starting with a CAD drawing file, a .dwg file, and getting that into real-world coordinate system units. This is an all-important first step in creating an indoor GIS. Indoors is kind of the next frontier of GIS, and unfortunately, there's usually not a lot of data if you're starting on an indoor GIS project. This uh, video is going to take you through the first step in generating that data. We want to take a CAD drawing that may be in page units or in inches and feet and get that into a real world coordinate system so it lines up with the data in our GIS. Now the first step in this process is getting to know your data. And the most important part of this is to getting to know the people who actually created the data. So they can help you answer very important questions like whether the CAD drawing was generated in page units or whether it does exist in a real world coordinate system. Also, if you can't determine the coordinate system that it's in, they may know, and that can be very important information as we'll see as we go through these steps. In most cases, you're going to see three different scenarios when you start with a CAD drawing. If you're really lucky, the CAD drawing will already be georeferenced. It will be in a real-world coordinate system and be GIS friendly. You can just bring it right into GIS and it lines up with everything that you have. If that's the case, then you can stop watching the video right now and go ahead and generate your indoor GIS. Uh, for most people though, they're going to run into one of the other two scenarios where the CAD, dra CAD drawing exists only in page units and is not GIS friendly. So when you bring this drawing into ArcGIS Desktop or ArcGIS Pro, it's going to display in an area that's really far away from your area of interest and you're pretty much starting from scratch and, and getting that into a real world coordinate system. Now there's also a middle scenario where you actually see a world file where the CAD drawings live and that gets you very excited and you think okay great this is in real world coordinate system but when you add it to ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Desktop it doesn't display where you think it, it should uh, it may in fact be very far away so in that case uh, we'll look at the steps where you can try to recover that coordinate system information but if you can't you know those steps aren't successful it's just like there is no world file so we'll kind of look at that uh, in depth so right now we'll switch over to ArcGIS Pro we'll take a look at each one of these scenarios and here we are in ArcGIS Pro. I've put together a project here with some data that I want to import for a building at the Esri Redlands campus. And I th we're going to go through the three scenarios that we talked about in the lead-in. And I'm a car guy, so it helps for me to kind of think of those scenarios as analogous to uh, Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler, where you have an entry level. Uh, that would be the CAD data with no coordinate system information at all that's in page units. You have a mid-range, the Plymouth, option which is some coordinate system information but it's not complete or you may not know what coordinate system it's in and then you have the Chrysler uh, upscale luxury edition where you actually have the coordinate system you know what it is and the data actually lines up with GIS data so we're gonna start off here with the Dodge scenario and working in ArcGIS Pro obviously I'm on the 3D team so I'm gonna default to a scene you could also do this in a map view, and we'll switch to a map view here in a minute. But the first thing you want to do usually when you have CAD drawings and you're not really sure what you're working with is just go ahead and add them to a scene or a map. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and browse to my data folder here. I'll go into the Dodge data. And ArcGIS Pro kind of gives me the option, instead of adding the entire CAD drawing, I can drill into the CAD drawing and just add, in this case, I'll just add the polylines. Now I've added that to my scene. And now I want to see where this falls on the map. So I expect it obviously to fall on the Esri Redlands campus in Redlands, California. But when I right click on this and say zoom to layer, this is obviously not Southern California. So um, this is telling me very strong hint that this CAD data may not have any coordinate system information. It's not referenced in a real world coordinate system. So another clue could be if I look at the folder structure where this drawing file lives, if I don't see a world file or a .wld file with the same name as my drawing file, uh, that can be another clue that there's no projection information. Now, if this is the case, ArcGIS Pro makes it relatively easy uh, to georeference that CAD data, and we'll do that right now. I'm going to switch over here to my referencing two-dimensional map view, and I've added as base data here this campus base map. And this base map contains pretty accurate information um, and also it contains the building outline you can see here of building O and OA and that's going to be my study area for this project 
and I know that this is a good data set that I can use to reference my CAD data too. That's a really important thing to stress here. Georeferencing your CAD data really doesn't do you much good if you don't have data to reference it to that actually meets your accuracy standards. So spend some time and find something that you want to use as a, uh, as a reference data set and that'll pay off for you in the long run. So now I'm going to follow the same uh, procedure and I'm actually in the same location. So I'm just going to add the polylines for the second floor of building O and OA. Now if I, I'll notice that these don't show up in the map. Uh, we know from the previous step that that data does not have a coordinate system associated with it. So I wouldn't expect it to draw here. But now what we can do is pay attention to the ribbon up here. And this is something that's really nice about ArcGIS Pro is when I click on one of the layers in my CAD drawing, uh, specifically I'm looking at the exterior wall polyline layer, then you notice that this CAD layer tools option becomes available. Now if I click on that, one of the things that I see there is a georeference tool, and this georeference tool does just what you think it would do. It georeferences your CAD data to a known good GIS data set. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and you can see I'm presented with a new set of tools. And at this point, what I want to do is to kind of get the data frame where I want it. Uh, essentially, you want to have your area of interest kind of centered in the data frame. And the reason you want that is the first step in georeferencing your CAD data is going to be to fit it to the display. So once you're kind of in the right area, you just click on the Fit to Display button, and boom, there you go. Now my CAD drawing uh, shows up in the map here. And it's not bad, it's not great, uh, but it's not bad. At least we have some overlap and we're kind of in the ballpark here. Now one thing I like to do is to kind of move the CAD drawing off to the side. And I do this because that allows me to kind of line up my kind of pick out a couple of good control points. I'm going to be limited to two control points when I add those, and we'll do that in just a second. But I like to be able to have like a clear shot with my mouse cursor to the destination and also the source. So with that said, let me zoom over here and zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of control points. And I look at the building and I see this little relief here. It's like a column relief. I'm going to use that as a uh, reference point uh, between my CAD data here. And you can see snapping is, uh, is enabled for my CAD drawing. And now what I'll do is, let me zoom in a little bit closer, and I'll settle this in, you know, take a little care and try to get that in there just so, and then click on that as my destination point. And now I'm going to go over here. And one of the things I like to do in this process is to pick uh, control points on opposite corners of the building. Uh, so I picked one on the, the northeast corner of the building. Now I'm down here at the southwest corner, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this little uh, column relief in the building that lined up just so, and then have my second control point. Now when I click Apply, let me zoom up here a little bit, you can see that that really did a pretty good job. Um, so Picking control points on the opposite corners of the building uh, kind of minimizes the distortion. And we've gotten a pretty good uh, view of our CAD data where it's supposed to be. So for me, this is good enough. I think this works for my project. And the last step in the process is simply to save this. And when I click on the Save button in the georeferencing toolbar, that's going to save the projection information with the CAD drawing and also output a world file with my two comp control points in it. So I'll go ahead and click Save. Now, I've also got another little sanity check place where I can go and, um, let's see, I've just got the World Topo map service, and I'm going to go ahead and, and try adding in. We're in the Dodge folder, second floor. I'm going to add the polylines again and see what happens. So this time, when I zoom to the layer, It's right where I expect it to be, so that's great news. This is a, a just an acid test to make sure. And you may notice that it seems like it shifted a little bit. And the reason for that is I'm using the World Topographic Map Service. If I turn that off and then turn on my Reference Map Service, you can see that it matches up with that perfectly. So the next scenario that we'll look at is the Plymouth scenario. And in this case, I know that I have some projection information for my CAD drawing. I see a world file that's in the same folder. 
but I'm not really sure what coordinate system it, it's in. And one of the, again, the first step I can take to try to find that out, I'll browse here to the Plymouth folder and the second floor drawing. And I'll add my polylines. And now the good news is it changed my extent. That's pretty good, but I'm not really seeing many features, ground features there. So that makes me a little suspicious. And I zoom out and it looks like, oh yeah, I'm really far away from where I need to be. So the good news is I do have a world file. The bad news is it's not anywhere close to where it needs to be. So I have two options here. I can either find out who made the CAD drawing or who managed the CAD drawing and ask them, do you know what coordinate system this world file was generated in? And if I have that information, I can go through a similar workflow to what we did for georeferencing from scratch. And when I highlight a CAD layer, I get this CAD layer tools again. And this time I'm going to go into define projection. And if I know the information from the people who generated the CAD drawing, I can put that in here and then run this tool. Now, if I'm really lucky, when I open define projection, the projection information will automatically populate into the coordinate system dialog. Now, in most cases, you're going to add the CAD drawing. Even if it has a world file, this coordinate system dialog is going to be blank. And so you'll have to go through, uh, if you do know the coordinate system that it was created in, you can browse to it here or put in the well-known ID, fill this, this out and click OK. But if you don't know what pro uh, coordinate system the world file was created in, then sorry to say it's like basically not having a world file and you're pretty much starting from scratch. Uh, so you'll go through the Dodge scenario. You may think you have Plymouth data, but you actually have Dodge data. This is probably something you won't see all the time, but it does come up. So I wanted to be sure and cover this, this workflow. Now I'm going to close my geoprocessing dialog and we'll look at the last scenario, the Chrysler scenario. And what we want to see here is when we add the data, let me step back to the Chrysler data set. I'll go again, drill into the second floor drawing, add the polylines, and we'll zoom to this layer. And lo and behold, it shows up in the right location. Now again, we see the little offset, but again, that's because that's the World Topographic Map Service. If I turn on my campus-based map, we've got a good match here. So hopefully this has been a good starting point to help you get to understand the CAD data that you're starting with, and then to get that into something that's really useful with your GIS. Once you have the CAD layer geo-referenced, you can use geoprocessing tools on it. You can bring it into a geodatabase. Uh, the process becomes much, much easier once you have that uh, geo-referencing information. So thanks again for listening, and hopefully this helps.